Hi guys, uh, KP this side from InvestorWise. Hope all of you are doing good. Uh, of lately, I've been getting a lot of messages with uh, my clients or uh, people in general asking me to make uh, a video on Reliance to know what exactly is going on with Reliance and then I'm getting both the uh, kind of questions like people asking me, is this still a good time to buy Reliance or they're too late for it? And then uh, people who participate in FNO segment, that is futures and options, they ask me if they can go short on Reliance at this price because they feel this is not a justified price for Reliance and it has done way too high. So uh, before we start with the discussion, I have to give you some background about the company uh, with, with its pricing and its business model. So on 23rd of March, Reliance has done its 52-week uh, low, which was uh, close to 867 rupees. And on uh, on the Friday closing, that is just two days back, uh, uh, it has done its 52 week high of 1788 and the closing has come close to 1755, 1756 rupees. So if you see effectively in three months time, the stock has almost uh, grown by 100% from 867 levels, it has gone up to 1750 levels, which is like almost the wealth has doubled for investors who would have purchased Reliance on 23rd of March. But again, we have to be very honest on this. Uh, uh, we also did uh, buying for our clients, but we did exit from the stock because nobody knew this is going to be so high. Now, the, the reason for the stock going so high is first you need to understand what is their business model. Now, we all know that Reliance is a company headquartered in M Mumbai and uh, the the company uh, is revenue wise it's the uh, biggest company market capitalization wise it's the biggest company in india with their operations spread across different uh, sectors uh, covering the petroleum the energy the uh, they are into the uh, retail business they are into telecommunication they are into textile business so they have a wide spread of business uh, and uh, they have very strong presence especially in the indian context now the the biggest uh, downside for the company was their huge debt if we look at the net debt as on march 20 uh, march 2020 balance sheet they have a total debt debt of close to 161000 crores 161000 crores which is 161000 crores is their total net debt as per the balance sheet for march 2020 okay now uh, Yes, uh, if you see the balance sheet uh, across various uh, sources, you might find they have some defer tax liability, some provisioning is done. I'm talking about their net debt. Okay, guys. Now, what happens is uh, 2019, they have planned. Uh, this was the initial plan that uh, the Reliance Geo, that is the telecommunication business, they wanted to introduce it, float it as a different company. But now the problem was from 2016, when the Reliance Geo was first launched in 2016, the company has done a lot of investment in the technology for the sake of Reliance Geo. And they have taken a lot of debt in their books. Plus, for the first couple of years, because of uh, offering services at no cost and then offering services at a very minimal cost, the company has done a lot of losses as a result of which it started piling up on its debt and not having enough profits to pay off their debt. Yes, revenues were high, but then they were still not in profit. 2019, the company uh, got its Reliance Geo business into profits. They wanted to come up with an IPO, but they had a technical difficulty. The problem was most of its debt was taken for the purpose of Geo business. But now because they wanted to bring Geo as a separate entity, they had to take the debt along with it. If they take so much of debt along with it, you please try to understand, okay, it's a little technical. So if they take the company, uh, public by bringing its IPO and they shift this debt from uh, Reliance uh, to Reliance Geo business then what happens is company does not have enough profits to match up to its debt so it becomes a very high debt company and IPO probably would have failed in that case so in August 2019 uh, in the 42nd AGM the annual general meeting Mukesh Ambani made it very clear that by March 2021 not 20, March 2021, they will make the company debt free uh, because they have, they, have, they have made their intentions very clear that there are large investors who are planning to buy stake in the company and by selling this stake, they will be able to pay off their debt by March 2021. 
but now since uh, in march 2020 itself the stock was under pressure it was low valued so investors started showing a lot of interest in buying this stake right away that is the right time for uh, any potential buyer to buy the stake in the company for these people that is for reliance also it was a great opportunity to generate some funds by selling stake and in the process they can use this money for paying off their debt making company a debt free uh, organization now for a company which is fundamentally as strong as reliance who is having a dominance uh, in in each sector if they can become a debt free company or at least if they have enough surplus to pay off their debt then nothing can be greater than that right so starting with facebook they have purchased a stake of close to 10% 9.99% was the stake sold to them there were many other investors uh, uh, like tpg silver lake uh, and uh, general atlantic KKR. These are some of the companies who have invested uh, in buying some stake in the business of Reliance. Primarily, the business, uh, uh, primarily the business of Geo has been sold out. The stake of Geo has been sold out. Uh, I don't exactly remember the uh, total stake sale, but I think it is close. It is close to 22 to 23 percent, which is less than 25 percent. Okay, so please don't uh, don't uh, go by the accuracy of the numbers. Try to understand the context of our discussion. Okay, I might go wrong with some numbers. Their debt was close to 161,000 crores. By selling this stake, they have raised close to 115,000 crores, which is 1 lakh 15,000 crores. Plus, they brought a right issue, which was the high, uh, largest right issue in India uh, as on date, which would uh, sum up to 53,000 crores. So, if you, uh, if, you, if you add up all these numbers, their debt is 161,000 crores, but by selling their stake to different organizations, plus the right issue, they have been able to raise a total of 168,000 crores. Will they be immediately paying off their debt is not important, but what we can see clearly is they have generated enough uh, enough cash with them they are now having that much reserves that it can be easily used to pay off their debt and once that is done if they pay off their debt then the next big idea for them is going to bring of uh, uh, geo ipo and which obviously is going to get them again massive funds by by uh, introducing uh, the company stake to public at large this is their idea and now the reason why, why why investors are so bullish on the stock is because what he committed on in August 2019 was set up as a target for March 21 has been achieved much ahead of the time at least nine months ahead of the time uh, that is in June 2020 itself they are able to uh, achieve that target of selling the stake and raising enough funds to pay off their debt. So the question is uh, can we still buy Reliance? I personally uh, feel that uh, it might be a good buy, but personally, uh, everybody have their own strategies. I would not prefer to buy a stock at its 52 week high. I generally do, don't do that because for me, there is simple argument that if I have to buy something, I would probably buy it at its 52 week low or somewhere in between the 52 week high and 52 week low, which with, with the stock being at 40, 50% discount to its current market price. And when you have so many other alternatives available in the market, uh, you probably should look for those alternatives rather than uh, getting attracted to something which is shining too much right now. So Reliance is one of those companies which is like the uh, talk of the town at this point of time. And obviously you will be attracted to buy it, but I still feel uh, the, the stocks which are at 52 week high and given the kind of scenario which we have, the uncertainty with respect to scenario that we have, Indo-China tensions are there, uh, India also is having problems with Nepal at this point of time, plus the uh, pandemic uh, issues which are going on every day, we are registering higher number of corona cases. With all these things in mind, the stock of Reliance to me appears to be a little vulnerable. That is if there is pressure, uh, selling pressure in the market, Reliance will be one of the first stocks to do some correction. That is personal. Under that is my personal understanding guys. You might differ with it and I give a thumbs up for that. If you differ with, uh, with your opinion, it is absolutely fine. But this is my idea. I don't want to buy a stock which, which has done 100% upside in three months time and I don't feel this is the right time to buy this stock. But at the same time, I don't feel you should do short on Reliance at any point of time. You are you are inviting a lot of risk for yourself if you do that. I I personally know people who would have done a lot of Reliance futures uh, future sell uh, in the range of 1500 to 1600. Then people got caught at 1650 range where they started thinking that now it can't go any further up. Now you need to understand this this man is a seriously 
seriously he is a very very uh, uh, shrewd businessman because obviously everybody knew they are going to sell this stake but the way they have planned it the way they have planned it the way they have uh, uh, broken uh, the information to the public at large is is very very uh, premeditated move and they have they have disclosed the information step by step one uh, uh, deal at a time in such a manner that every time they announce a deal the stock will be going up and up and up if if they would have so uh, told you at once that we are selling this stake to these eight or ten uh, different companies and the total worth of this will be this much okay stock on one particular day would have done 100 200 300 up and then it the momentum would have been lost but he is very smart to know how exactly the information has to be shoot uh, has to be shot uh, out in the public so that the momentum never goes from this stock and that exactly is what we saw in last uh, uh, 58 to 60 days because all these deals have been done within a period of 58 days and they have been able to maintain that momentum in this stock but at this point of time if you ask me i personally would not like uh, uh, neither buying this stock at its current market price nor uh, uh, going short on the stock uh, what if I already have it with me? If you already have it, guys, uh, maybe if you're conservative, maybe you can sell off 50% of your holding uh, to to uh, realize some of your profits and 50% you can continue holding because we still feel they're going to aggressively uh, uh, grow going further because of the fact that uh, they they are planning a geo IPO. Maybe this year, maybe next year, but that is going to come. And once that happens, they, they, the stock is expected to go up for Reliance. Okay, now... Uh, Apart from that, a uh, couple of other things, guys. Uh, one is that when you see this uh, telecommunication business, the main competitors are Vodafone and Airtel. If you ask me, I still feel, uh, when I do that relative analysis, I still feel it's a great opportunity to get invested in Vodafone as well as Bharti Airtel because both these stocks are trading cheap. If you see overall, the, if you ask me fundamentally, uh, which of them telecommunication sector wise, which of them looks to be the best at this point of time, I would say hands down Bharti Airtel is a very good buy. You can easily, I, I have done a lot of buying for my clients in the range of 550. It went up to 580, 85 when we heard this news of stake sale by Bharti Airtel also, but then we did not hear on, on it much. So we got it at 550 range. We did profit booking at 590. Again, it went down. We again made clients buy at 550 odd levels. And my long term target, maybe uh, three to six months target would be 640 rupees for Airtel. Okay, please mark my words. So I still feel Bharti Airtel has a lot of upside in the stock. Plus the fundamentals of the company are very strong. On the other hand, if, if we look at Vodafone, I always say with Vodafone being an MNC and the way they have been able to pay off their uh, AGR dues and all those things, the intentions look good for the company. I have already done one video earlier also on Vodafone. I still feel that the company's intentions are good. They want to sustain the Indian market. They are in, they are in no mood to leave this market. And uh, uh, keeping that in mind, I see less percentage of downside risk from here on with the stock trading less than 10 rupees. With a long-term vision, you can buy that stock also. So guys, you need to understand one thing when as an advisor, I am recommending something. I have, I don't have to buy the best for my clients. Please understand that. What I need to do is buy something which can create wealth for my clients. So when I say that, if, if you ask me how much is the probability of Reliance becoming 3400 from 1700 and how much is the probability of Vodafone becoming 20 from 10, I would always prefer to go for Vodafone because I see 20 becoming, uh, 20, uh, 10 becoming 20 is any day more probable than 1700 becoming 34. So I need to see where, where my clients can generate more wealth. That is what I need to see, not uh, go and pick up the best in the industry. If I have to pick up best in the industry, Nestle is the best in FMCG, MRF is the best in tire segment, Reliance is the best in telecommunication segment. That's not what exactly my role is. My role is not to figure out what is best in the industry because probably what is already best in the industry has already achieved a very high price and I don't want to enter into that stock at such high prices. Okay. Number two is, if you look at it, uh, the, the, the business uh, concentration is still more in favor of Bharti Airtel. Yes, people have used, people have shifted a lot from Airtel and Vodafone to Geo. But if you look at this entire arrangement that they have done for raising funds, yes, their balance sheet will start appearing better now with a lot of reserves they having in their hand. Uh, and they, they, they being in a position to pay off their entire debt. Yes, 
apparently company seems to be a debt free company but you need to understand when you go for such mergers acquisitions or sale of uh, stake you are doing more of an inorganic growth that is external growth but internally the company is not growing so what we need to understand is by selling this stake they're raising money but it's not i'm not saying that geo is not a promising business but all i'm saying is probably the stake sale has already been factored in as a result of which the stock is already up by 100% whereas if you see the price movement in airtel or vodafone for that matter the stocks have still got a lot of upside left in them so keeping that in mind i feel i see more opportunity in airtel as an investor if you are if you are risk aggressive go for vodafone and if you are already having reliance probably hold on to 50 60% of your holding but do book some profits over there and if you have a very long term vision then guys you can stick to your holdings there's no point selling it out one more important thing which i want to point out here is generally what happens is you need to understand when when we look at the market the first thing we try to observe is the movement in sensex and nifty that is that is how people generally try to understand or forecast uh, where markets are moving whether they are going in green or they are going in red but guys you need to understand sensex is capturing just the performance of 30 stocks and nifty is capturing the performance of 50 stocks this is very very important guys you need to understand so when we look at sensex and nifty going up like nifty friday has gone above 10 10200 mark uh, sensex is close to 35000 mark when you look at these numbers you start feeling markets are bullish and with markets being bullish we have a tendency to go foolish because what we do is we start we start assuming that probably markets have gone into a bull phase and you start buying every bullshit stock in the market don't do that you need to understand something sensex and nifty movements will be based on these 30 and 50 stocks which cap, which which comprise the sensex and nifty index and how much a particular stock will impact the index depends on the market capitalization of the stocks so reliance is the most uh, uh, heavy market capitalization stock so whenever reliance is going up it will automatically make sensex and nifty go up it will impact sensex and nifty too much way too much compared to other stocks so if you ask me two stocks which are having the highest market capitalization in india right now it is uh, reliance followed by tcs and then you can just go and search on google which other stocks have more impact on sensex and reliance uh, sensex and nifty as an index but these are the two top market capitalization stocks so whenever reliance will go up automatically it will have a lot of positive impact on the index but don't get carried away by that don't feel that uh, because markets are in a bull phase so you can buy any crappy stock uh, stock out there don't get that i wash kind of a thing because this is giving you a complete wrong signal when you look at sensex and nifty most of the people do that they look at sensex and nifty and they try to get a message that okay markets are going in a bull phase now it's not like that reliance has gone up by 6% on friday which was a reason the markets were going up and once market starts going up then other uh, good stocks like if if we talk about auto sector maybe maruti if we talk about uh, the uh, fmcg sector the the likes of uh, uh, nestle or britannia if we talk about the uh, the other segment like uh, uh, the pharma sector then we are talking about stocks like dr reddy even dr reddy has a very uh, heavy market capitalization if you are talking about the financial sector then stocks like sbi icici bank or uh, the uh, types of bajaj finance bajaj finserv these stocks will also start following uh, uh, the upside because people have gone into that bull phase in their mind and as a result of that lot of buying will happen as long as good stocks are concerned you can do the buying but you should not get carried away and start buying every crappy stock out there which means i always say this whether markets are going up or markets are going down you will always have good opportunities in the market but then you have to be extra cautious and you need to understand the reason why stocks are going up if you see on on wednesday thursday friday last week the markets should actually uh, have reacted negative to the news of indo china uh, 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 that were problems that are happening plus uh, the covid-19 cases recording a new high every day keeping those things in mind we felt that markets might have a uh, markets might have a little bit of a bearish uh, move but then because of the news of reliance being uh, uh, being so positive taken so positively by the markets 
the overall uh, markets have been on a higher side because people then the bulls will take care of the bears in the, those kind of markets so you have to be very careful when you're doing the buying you need to understand the main reason why markets are going up sometimes it may be too much of buying being done by fii's sometimes it may be domestic institutional investors may doing a lot of buying sometimes it may be the heavyweight stocks like reliance tcs going up which is causing the sensex and nifty apparently to go up so you need to look at those factors Another one reason why probably markets are going up is because of the fact that the uh, the lockdown extensions are not expected. Businesses will get back to normalcy. Whether they will have demand or not, people are not thinking at that extent. What all people what uh, 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 what people are probably looking at is only the fact that businesses will start off and things will get back to normal. It's not so easy. Uh, the demand is going to be uh, low for the next uh, couple of quarters that we have already understood a lot of uh, ratings have been done with uh, gdp uh, forecast or even the uh, uh, fiscal deficits the numbers are given negative so we have to be i'm still saying there is a very good opportunities in the market the kind of business we have done in last 3 months is stupendous lot of lot of new clients have joined in lot of uh, the, the the main reason for that is probably people understand people are mature enough to understand that there are good opportunities to buy stocks and i always say that there are always good opportunities to buy uh, the right kind of stocks but you have to be very careful in what you are picking up any wrong move can probably cause wealth destruction in the market that you need to always take care of i hope the video is useful guys if you want me to cover any other topics do let me know till we meet again bye bye guys god bless all of you thank you